Class E airspace has a few different altitudes that it actually starts at. Let's take a look at some of the examples of where Class E starts at. So Class E, in this area where my cursor is at, because it is not depicted on the sectional of any other airspace around, that tells me that Class E airspace starts at 1,200 feet AGL. Now notice we're dealing with an above ground level number now. And the way you can remember that is that Class E, the altitudes associated with it, are not depicted on a VFR sectional chart. If they are depicted on a VFR sectional chart, they would still be in that mean sea level number, just like the other airspaces that we have seen examples of. But it's not. So it's an above ground level number at where it starts at. So in this area, Class E starts at 1,200 feet above ground level. It goes up to, but does not include, 18,000 feet mean sea level. So the higher altitude of where Class E ends at is the mean sea level number. And what it means by up to, but not including 18,000 feet mean sea level is that Class E will actually end at 17,999 feet because at 18,000 feet, another airspace starts. And that airspace is Class A. So Class E in this area goes from 1,200 feet to 17,999 feet mean sea level. Below it is Class G. Class G goes from the ground up to 1,200 feet because now Class E airspace is starting at 1,200 feet. So if we, as a remote pilot, are operating in any part of this area, let's say we're wanting to inspect this tower over here that's 265 feet above ground level. We are actually operating below that Class E airspace and we are operating in Class G which is uncontrolled, which means I can fly anywhere in this area that there is no other airspace depicted. There's no B, there's no C, there's no D. I can fly in that area all day long and not have to get authorization from either ATC or the FAA because I am in Class G airspace. So in this area, Class E starts at 1,200 feet and goes up to, but not including, 18,000 feet mean sea level. Now let's look at an example of Class E starting a little bit lower in altitude. So here we have the Jamestown Airport. Jamestown is actually considered a non-towered airport. Now how do I know that? I know it by this symbol here. This is the symbol for the airport. It's showing that the airport is located right here on the map. And because it is a magenta color, it is a non-towered airport. What does that mean? It simply means that this airport does not have a control tower, which means that you don't have to talk to ATC to enter and depart this airport. As a manned pilot, you can actually fly into this airport without having to ever talk to a single person. It's not a good idea to do that though. You want to be safe about it and you want to know of other aircraft operating in that area. So each airport has a frequency that you can dial into. For example, 122.8 for Jamestown. That is the CTAF frequency or the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. This means that if a pilot wants to listen in to the traffic, you as a remote pilot can do the same thing if you have an aviation radio that you can use. But if a pilot is flying into this airport and they want to know of other traffic around, they would dial this frequency in on their radio and they would listen. They would listen for other traffic either coming into the airport or exiting the airport. They could also state their intentions of what they're planning to do. So for example, if they would want to land at Jamestown, they would simply say Jamestown traffic and then state their intentions. 
Now, the reason why they include that Jamestown traffic before they state their intentions is because this common traffic advisory frequency is not just designated for this airport alone. There's not enough frequencies. There's not enough radio frequencies throughout the United States for all of the airports to have their own single frequency. So other airports might use this frequency. For example, Livingston over here uses the same exact frequency. So if there's a pilot flying into Livingston and he hears another pilot call on this frequency, Jamestown uh, traffic, then that other pilot knows he's not planning on landing or departing Livingston. I'm okay. I don't have to worry about that other pilot. So that's why they will start off with the name of the airport and including the phrase traffic to let them know that they're talking about that one single airport. So where does class E start at in here? Inside this magenta shaded circle. It actually starts at 700 feet above ground level, not 1200 anymore. So all we did is that we dropped 500 feet. So out here, Class E started at 1,200 feet above ground level, but inside this magenta shaded circle, it's now at 700 feet above ground level. Now, if we're operating our unmanned aircraft, if we're flying our drone in this area, inside this magenta shaded circle, we do not have to get authorization to fly in this area. We have every right to be there because we are still in uncontrolled airspace. We are in that class G airspace from the surface to 700 feet because class G it is going to always end or begin below class E airspace. So if there's no other airspace below class E, so out here like 1200 feet, we know that class G is going to start and end below that class E airspace. Same way as in here. Below that 700 feet is Class G airspace. Now, even though we have every right to fly in here as a remote pilot, I always recommend for remote pilots to carry an aviation radio with them anytime they're planning on operating within five miles of a non-towered airport. And it's for safety reasons. You could dial in that CTAF frequency to your aviation radio and listen in for traffic. That way you can hear other aircraft that are planning on either entering or departing the Jamestown airport. So if you hear Jamestown traffic and then that aircraft calls out their intentions, that lets you know, okay, I am going to start seeing some traffic in this area. Again, you have every right to be there, just like the man pilots do, but you never want to be at the center of the airport or near the runways, especially when you have manned aircraft either entering the airport, they're planning on landing there, or they're taking off, they're departing. You never want to get in the way of a manned aircraft. Manned aircraft always have the right of way. You as a remote pilot, you do not have that right of way. It's expected of you to get out of the way and to ensure that you are not causing any harm or hazard to manned aircraft, no matter what kind of aircraft it actually is. So that is class E starting at 700 feet. And again, it goes up to, but does not include 18,000 feet mean sea level. So that number does not change. Now let's look at another example of class E starting at a different altitude. So here we have the Crossville Airport. Again, it's a magenta color, which means it is non-towered, which also means that there is not a control tower. There's no control tower that a man pilot has to speak to to enter in to Crossville Airport. If it was towered, it would be blue. Any towered airport, so the Class B airports, Class C, Class D, that airport symbol is always going to be blue. It could be a circle like this one with the little tick marks, or it could be 
the runway lining, things like that. It's always going to be blue, though. So inside Crossville Airport, you notice there is a red or magenta dashed line. That magenta dash line means that class E starts at the surface and goes up to, but does not include, 18,000 feet mean sea level. So because class E is still controlled airspace, if I was a remote pilot flying inside this magenta dash circle, I would have to get approval by the FAA or by ATC to fly in this area. It's controlled airspace. There's no class G below it because class E, because of this magenta dashed line, starts at the surface. So there's no class G below it. There's no way that class G could be below the surface. You can't have class G underground. So I do have to get approval to fly in this area. Now, don't pay attention to this red dash line. That is something entirely different. It doesn't have to deal with airspace. Focus on the actual magenta dashed line going around Crossville. That is the class E starting at surface. Now out here, I can fly all day long because there is no other airspace depicted. So class E is going to start at 1,200 feet. I'm good to go. I am still operating in class G airspace. Inside here, I'm operating at the surface. I do have to get authorization. But let's go out of the magenta dashed line. We're out of the class E surface area. Now what are we in? Well, I notice that there is a magenta shade. Remember, the magenta shade means class E starts at 700 feet. I'm out of the Class E surface. I am now in the 700 feet Class E airspace. I'm good to go again. I don't have to get authorization to fly in this area because, again, Class E starts at 700 feet. In here, it does not start at surface anymore because I am outside of that magenta dashed line. So these are the examples of class E and the different altitudes that they start at.